Hello everybody. So Enphase is trading at $91 right now. This is not my full Enphase video. The last time I did a full analysis of Enphase, that was this video. I'll put the link in the description where I was talking about whether it's the best solar stock and my full thesis of Enphase. Enphase is a complicated company with a lot of moving parts and I think it can get very easy to get carried away and reading news article about an analyst report behind a paywall and you know kind of get fear and that's what that's what these reports do right they they, they make people fearful I am not fearful on this one I actually bought I put my daily DCA today into Enphase um, at 92 when I recorded this video. Anyways, let's talk about Enphase. So, there's hundreds of articles literally everywhere with outtakes from this RBC capital downgrade to $100. And the articles all highlight three things. So, one of them is third party solar ownership in the USA that could be a headwind for demand in the USA. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that point aside. The other one is the current gen batteries of Enphase may see a slowdown because the new power roll is out. And so that slowdown may be more pronounced in California. But that slowdown in sale of current gen, gen batteries for batteries for, for, uh, for Enphase, that slowdown in, in battery sales may be um, somewhat lower in early 2025 because in early 2025 Enphase is releasing a new 10 kilowatt hour battery with a new meter color and a new combiner and that could be a tailwind for Enphase. So in short third party solar ownership may decrease the demand slightly and slower sale of their batteries because the power all is out and Enphase's new 2025 battery is not out just yet. I also have a few, uh, just, just one unrelated question, uh, totally unrelated, of course. Do stocks follow analysts' price targets or do analysts follow uh, their targets and set their targets based the stock price? Do the analysts follow the stock price or does the stock price follow the analysts? And in this case, right, totally unrelated, of course, um, but in this case, it seems like it's the latter, right? The stock was down to 100 bucks. Well, let's release a report with a new price target at 100 bucks because the stock just got to 100 bucks. You know, it had been dropping almost a month. It was trading at around 120, very close to the prior price target. It's dropped by almost 20%. You know, now you look silly because you have a price target of 125 and now the stock is trading at 100. So let's update it to 100. Of course, this is a this is an unrelated uh, discussion, obviously, uh, right here. But I think it's an interesting question: Do analysts follow price target, or do uh, do or is it the, or is it the opposite? Um, because in my view. What is my view about the points that are raised? Well, I don't think they change much for the long-term thesis of Enphase. First of all, let's talk about third-party solar ownership. So, so typically, just so you know, typically whenever you see a, a news article reporting on solar, it's often um, in a negative, well, it depends, but local news in America, like they often report about solar in a, in, in, a, in a negative way. And it's very open, this arrangement, this TPSO arrangement, where the household doesn't own the panels, the panels were put by a third party, and then the third party applies for the tax credit, it applies for a 30% or 7,500 tax credit, direct pay uh, IRS, as uh, Mandy would say, the, the end phase, uh, CFO. So, and the way it works is like the, the only situations where, in my view, again, it would make sense to do TPSO is is um, if you if you don't have if you don't have enough income to claim the tax credit, right? If you don't have enough income to claim the tax credit, a third party can serve as an entity that claims the tax credit, and then that third party who claims the tax credit that you can't claim, they may pass down to you some savings from that tax credit. So it can work in very specific situations, such as nonprofits, of course, such as low-income households. Um, the analyst report also. I mean, when I read about it also mentions like public schools. Um, anyway, so if you don't have federal income tax, 
there's a way to still get a credit and that's third party solar and they're arguing that Enphase is gonna lose some demand because a lot of people are gonna be using third party solar and I would say I don't think so about that because Enphase was always the premium player in in the space um, my last analysis about the cost of an Enphase system compared to a solar edge system is about a thousand dollar difference uh, in quoted price at the dinner table uh, um, uh, to quote a battery here. Um, Enphase is slightly more expensive, maybe five to ten percent more expensive. They're a premium player in the space and therefore they are less appealing to a customer that would be ideal for third party solar. They also mentioned the fact that in third party solar oftentimes the debt, you don't take on that debt, right? That debt is going to be taken on by the provider and they may be ac having access to lower capital maybe overall i think this is short term noise this is all it is third party solar ownership anybody who's very serious about solar and studying the matter in my view they would not consider that way to get solar there's no such thing as free solar or solar finance by a third party well there is but when there is it's not very compelling is it anyways just my point of view and then talking about the, about the current gen batteries, um, talking about that, the current gen batteries, of course, um, is, is, is also is also short term. Because and why is this short term? Of course, that's because the the end phase new battery is going to come. And let's not forget. I'll get get to that point in the second. But let's not forget that that small batteries may become irrelevant in the future with bidirectional uh, charging. In the future, you may just need a tiny battery on your wall, anyways. Because if a household has two electric cars that are plugged in, then you don't need to worry about a, having a battery wall because your electric car will serve as your battery for your home with bidirectional charging. So Tesla Powerwall, yes, it is It is a great product. Yes, it is a status symbol in a lot of fancy neighborhood. I see it very often. It's displayed proudly. It's a great product. The Tesla Powerwall has always been a threat to the Enphase battery storage business. But the valuation of Enphase, in my view, most of my Enphase story has always been about the microinverters. And you may know that all of the videos I've made trying to compare microinverters compared to string inverters and why I prefer this technology. In my view, Enphase is still a 90% play on the microinverters. That's the play. The battery, you know, it's hopes and it's very nice, but it's never been the top story for Enphase. Point, point number one, then Enphase will have its overproduct that competes with the Tesla Powerwall. So that's point number two. And then I want to I want to emphasize briefly the mix and match approach. Uh, it's very common, you know, these installers they have a lot of possibilities available in their toolkit. One possibility is the installation of a Tesla Powerwall with an Enphase system. You can do that. There is a mix and match. There is a compatibility that is still available. Of course, Enphase wants you to buy everything Enphase and Tesla wants you to buy everything Tesla. But there is a mix and match. There is a compatibility. And given the general hardness to get the Tesla Solar and the Tesla Solar system, you know, I wouldn't be surprised that someone chooses a, a, a first party solution for the solar and then you choose your battery backup. You may choose a Tesla for that, a Tesla product for that, and then you choose solar with another supplier. So the mix and match is also there. Competition is not always the only state of two companies interacting with each other. Sometimes companies interact with each other under the basis of cooperation or competition. You compete on some part of the business, but you cooperate on another part of the business. So that's an important point in my view. And again, short term, short term. The batteries, that's a short term story. This is a short term story. Let me just Again, this is not a full end phase video. My my deep dive in an end phase, I cannot make them less than an hour. And I put a lot of content in there. So I'll just say a few things that I think are relevant here for the long-term thinker and the long-term investor. End phase is still seen by analysts as a US-centric, mostly California story. It's not. I estimate the mix roughly being 40% non-USA, 60% USA. And it 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 really it really it really depends. It really depends, you can see, so this was from Q1. So in Q1, they were 57% USA and 43% international. So sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. It's, it, it's a mix, but this is a company 
with the growth rates that it's experiencing in Europe, this is a company that is trending towards a 50-50, 50% USA, 50% international. So that dilutes all, all of the arguments that were set out here because these are all US-centric arguments. This company has a lot of international sales, point number one. Point number two, which is which which seems to not be discussed, is it's yeah, it's true, the seven thousand five hundred tax credit, it's it's a great help, but it's it's a help at the consumer level. It's a help at these third party ownership companies level. It's the it's a help at the installer level. In fact, I could make a very you know, strong case that mo most of a tax credit uh, payment will be seen in one way or another more at the installer level or at the third party owner level or at the household level and much less at the end phase level. Now, there is a subsidy that is that, it, that was almost tailor made for end phase, that is almost exclusively for end phase that they get at the manufacturer level. And that subsidy is the 11 cents per watt AC for microinverters manufacturing in the USA. And if you, know, if you follow end phase, you know, they closed their plant, I believe it was in Eastern, in Eastern Europe. They had a plant in Eastern Europe. They had just opened before the IRA. They closed it down. End phase is, is shifting its entire manufacturing Hoover USA on lines that are highly automated, fully automated lines. This is a consumer electronics product. The microinverter is, is a consumer electronics product. It's made, it's made much more like a phone than it is an industrial appliance. It's not made like an industrial appliance, like a string inverter. It's made like a, like a phone, much closer than a phone. It's a manufacturing line that is very highly automated. And they get 11 cents per watt direct pay IRS, to quote Mandy, the, CEO, the CFO. And we know that end phase, the IQ8 is now, but they're working on IQ9 and IQ10. And the intuition is, and we kind of know that it's going to be gallium nitride. And gallium nitride, if you have a gallium nitride phone charger, you know the benefits of that, right? You, you, you can have a, 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 a teeny tiny 60 watt brick charger that does a lot of inverting. And so gallium nitride is going to help and phase of microinverters that are going to be technologically much more advanced, i.e. they're going to have a much greater inversion capacity. By the way, the, IQ, the IQ8-3P is already, at, is already at 480 watt AC. But we are going to get microinverters, their mainstream one, not a special model, their mainstream model, model. What if their mainstream model, the IQ10, let's call it, two or three years from now, what if it's a 550, 600 watt microinverter? What's the subsidy is going to be? The subsidy at 500 is $55 per microinverter, right? What if what if every single microinverter they ship, you know, two or three years from now is a 600 one, right? That's $66 of, of subsidy, right? And so on, $777 of subsidy. You are getting very close to the cost of manufacturing the product. So so you're in a situation where this company could have its manufacture its manufacturing could have the cost of making them covered by that subsidy that is that is how mismatched these subsidies are in my view they are way too high for the taxpayer as a taxpayer i find this subsidy way too high um right so and we and we know solar this is not the first time the regulator makes a mistake in solar in favor of the producers in europe they had a lot of mismatched incentives at the turn of the 2010s, and they they had to pay a lot by contract. This is not the first time. I think this is a, I think this is a miscalculated policy on the end of the government, where you're going to get a solution that's going to get so many subsidies that the cost of making the product might be covered by the subsidies. And I've argued that in depth in some of my prior videos. And things that, of course, were not discussed in the news report, I'm not saying the analyst, I didn't read the analyst report, but the news report didn't discuss this, is the idea that solar is going to get more compelling than ever as AI is going to inevitably raise the prices of electricity on the grid. As we have a grid that is failing more and more, solar is going to be sold as a resilience option. People who buy Generac, you know, these generators, they cost $67,000 for a generator. Well, if you decide to not get a generator, but just get a solar, uh, end phase solar system, right? Well, that's six, $7,000 that you had earmarked for a generator, which now you can put towards a solar system. 
let's not forget these systems do backup energy, right? You have the energy resale market to the grid and the smart grid connections, which connects to the virtual grid and the future virtual grid, the, the possibility for perhaps Enphase participating in these virtual grids in the future, and maybe even becoming a utility company and reselling that power with the IT and the convergence of solar with car batteries. If you have a household, with two cars, that's two batteries. As long as you have one car always at home, one or, one or the other, your house is gonna be able to run on that car. And that's, 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 that's the bi bi-directional charging revolution that's gonna happen to solar. In my view, solar is going to become just ever more compelling as we go. And the short-term noise here of, of the third-party solar ownership and of the power wall being a little better at selling right now than it will be in early 2025, that's just short-term noise. That is a buying opportunity. I am happy to be buying solar. So this was not financial advice, not investment advice, just entertainment. Please like, please subscribe. Hoping you were entertained. Thank you for watching.